morning, people. Good morning. I don't know if this is on. Well, we'll do without. We can hear you. We can hear me. Good morning. I'm Reverend Paul Bigner. My wife and I live in Brainerd, and we're happy to come on out here and uh, join your worship today. Uh, today is uh, Lutheran Women's Missionary League Day, uh, Lutheran Women in Mission. And uh, I was amazed, and my wife was amazed, to see all of these beautiful uh, quilts uh, out here. Uh, women of the congregation have made them, and they're going to be sent off to people who are very underprivileged. We're glad to do that, glad to share with that. Uh, our, today uh, we will follow the order of service and the opening hymn, O Holy Spirit, enter in. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, 
O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, we therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come to worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart and I will glorify your name forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The reading from the Old Testament is from Ezekiel chapter 36. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which I you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanlessness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my just decrees. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According, according to your abundant mercy, mercy blot out my transgressions. transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and, and cleanse me from my sin. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, and, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with the Holy Spirit. The reading from the New Testament letters is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the creation of the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your minds, your souls, by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that you Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Confess our faith in the words of my Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. It's the gospel lesson for the day. And it sounds an awful lot like laws and rules. And you better shape up. But it is gospel. Our Lord Jesus selects these because they come from the wilderness wanderings of the people of God. God had taken them out of a long captivity in Egypt and had delivered them with strong, powerful acts showing that he was God over all of the gods of, of Egypt, and he was the one to be followed, and he was the one to be loved with all that we are in hand. So it is, it is gospel, and it is a good reminder to us that real life is not just breathing and blood oxygenating our brain cells. It's more than eating and sleeping and waking and working and playing. It's more than the round, the daily round of activities. Real life includes a relationship with God. For us Christians, we know that is marked by repentance and faith. A two-sided event which reminds us that God should be in the center of life and existence. I am not just living around my beautiful little self, whatever that may be. We need something more because we are not good enough as we are. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, starting from the inside and working out into the strength and activities of the day. Uh, we're reminded that we don't get that on our own. Jesus came to recapture us and to give us real life. People can live an existence. They can put in their time doing the things they do day by day. But Jesus came to give life in all of its fullness, in all the dimensions and areas of life, in all <laughs> the overtones of needing. He came to be the essential for real life to begin, start, and continue, and to keep life going, connected to God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that is a wonderful piece of good news. Because our Lord Jesus was not just one teacher among many. Not one person who set an example that we should follow. Uh, he was not just one teacher uh, like uh, comparable to uh, Muhammad or Buddha or other religious or semi-religious leaders. After all, he came from God. And the people of Jesus' day investigated him. And their careful investigation showed that he was only a carpenter or mason's son. He grew up in an insignificant little village named Nazareth. So how could Jesus be more than a handyman from a poor home with no training and how could he be the special messenger from God? That is the source of Christian faith and life. Against all evidence, 
Jesus is the one. And he has the right to say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord with all your heart, mind, strength, and all your ability. Thank God we can know who he is. Example. T.E. Lawrence was a soldier and a writer of novels. And he was a close personal friend of Thomas Hardy, who was also wrote novels and poems. And T.E. Lawrence was an airman in the Royal Air Force. And sometimes he would visit Thomas Hardy's home in his uniform. And on one of those visits, the mayoress of Dorchester was also at the Hardy home. <laughs> And she was angry and bitterly affronted that she would have to deal with a common airman. She, in her exalted opinion of herself, said, I don't think I can eat lunch with a common soldier. And so in French, she complained to Mrs. Hardy that never in all her born days had she ever been forced to sit down and eat with a common soldier. And T.E. Lawrence then said back to her in perfect French, I beg your pardon, madam, but could I serve as your interpreter? Because Mrs. Hardy knows no French. And that snobbish, discourteous woman had made a shattering mistake just by judging on externals. And so we are to remember why Jesus came, that he came for us. And he, we are reminded that the Bible is not a book of rules. And if you follow all the rules, you will please God, and God will get you into his good afterlife. No, the scriptures are not a catalog outlining the minimal requirements that you have to do in order to earn God's favor and in order to earn a place in God's salvation. Jesus came and did it. That's why he was born in this world. That's why he was the scandal of a small town carpenter. That's why he went through all kinds of conflict with parties and people who were against him. And finally, while he was ra railroaded to death on the cross, killed by people's coldness and those who were dead set on earning their way by rule and law keeping. And God raised him from death so that anyone who believes in Jesus may have life. And you can be sure of that eternal salvation. Uh, there are some people who say today, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. Uh, that's like my saying, you know, I live over there in Brainerd on 371, and if I just head north, I want to go to the Twin Cities. If I just keep heading north on 371 and join 71, I'll get to Bemidji. But that's not the Twin Cities. <laughs> and if you say, I want to get to the Twin Cities, and I'm going to get on <laughs> Highway 10, heading west to Fargo and on into Bismarck, North Dakota, that's not the tent that's going to take you to St. Paul. You've got to have the right directions. You've got to be headed the right way. You may think sincerely you're going the right way, but you're on the wrong road. It's not taking you to where you want to go. So you take any road away from Jesus Christ and his cross, 
and you are going to damage yourself. This little text reminds us that we ought to uh, love our neighbor as ourselves. It is not so much that we love ourselves. We should have a good self-image. And if we get stuck on ourselves, then we got no time or energy left over to love anybody else except ourselves. It's not so much a love of ourselves, but that we have room for our neighbor. We are to love as Jesus Christ loved, fully and honestly. We're to love others and bring the best out of them. There was a couple who had been fighting and arguing a great deal. They have done this for a number of years. And finally they went to a pastor hoping that they would get his approval so that they could divorce. And the per pastor knew that the man could not love his wife as Jesus Christ loved his church. And she could not love her neighbor either. And then the pastor very wisely said, I think you ought to follow Jesus' word of guidance. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them expecting to get nothing back. And for the next three weeks, I want you to really love one another as though they were enemies. And if you're going to be enemies, then be Christian enemies. If the other one is giving you the short end of things, give back to them and do good without expecting any good to come back. The couple tried. It was very, very difficult. Now when one got nasty, the other got nice. And the ongoing battles became less frequent and less intense. And the years of bad habits of fighting simmered down. And the fights became skirmishes, and the skirmishes got to the point where they talked and looked at each other and laughed. As they stopped hating and fighting, they rediscovered some of the fine qualities in e, the other person that had brought them together in the first place. And as their pastor had hoped, they grew into loving one another as God had loved them. So I want you to remember that, that God loves us in spite of our sins and shortcomings. He loves us because he loves us, not because we're so beautiful and attractive. We are called to love as Jesus loved. And that means that you give yourself to the other person and you think of the other person at least close to first. And that's my little message on the gospel lesson for the day. May God's Holy Spirit bless it to our minds and hearts. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we join in the LWML pledge in fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood bought gift of redemption. We dedicate ourselves to him and all that we have.
the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal, eternal fellowship with Him. Amen. We invite you to stand for the prayer of the Church. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin. And yet in your love, you have reconciled us to yourself through your Son. Give us your Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, that our lives may grow in devotion to you for the salvation you have so generously given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide, we pray, our congregation in life and witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is so common, we may be a place of peace. In our divided nation, make this your congregation a gathering place of hearts united in you, who extend your welcome to all. Inspire all the members of your congregation to love this place where your name is invoked and your grace proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. Through the faithful gathering of monies and mites, may Lord Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put all you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost and the erring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the daily life that sustains us in life, for food and health, for housing and, and clothing, for employment, for moderate weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation, that in every time of abundance and time of need, we may know your peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. For those who are, have health concerns, for doctors, hospitals, uh, and all others who deal with uh, bringing health and healing, we pray. And we remember our members, Dolores Wicks, Merrill Gieselquist, a prayer of thanksgiving, Mike Raditz, Millie Raditz, Dennis and Libby Stegan, Jerry and Barb Scherfenberg, Art Morris, Candy Kramer, Carter, and Bonnie Rigg. Give them your healing strength, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the communicants who come to your table to eat and drink your son's holy body and blood under bread and wine, may they draw near with truth, with humble confidence in your forgiveness and reliance upon your promise of nurture as we faithfully walk the way homeward, heavenly way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. spirit who calls us to do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. 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 To you we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. 
Son and the Holy Spirit bless these quilts that we give to those in need. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole work of the Lutheran world relief, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. To you be all glory and honor now and forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. <laughs> and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Peace to serve the Lord. Amen.
closer Lord and blood of his dear son strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen.
O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.